Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I decided to film a try on slash overall review of the new Huda Beauty Easy Bake loose setting powders that she is about to come out with. There is a lot of tea about this product, about the launch in general, and I really wanna try out the product and see if it's worth the hype. So if you guys, without further ado, wanna see me demo this product and chit chat a little bit about it, definitely stay watching. So this was sent to me as a PR package, but this video is not sponsored. If you guys are unaware, I'm gonna make this really brief and give my opinion so we can just get right into the demo. So if you guys are unaware and you guys are clueless what I'm talking about, there is a lot of controversy around the whole, you know, marketing theme of Huda's launch with this product. If you guys are unaware of the brand Beauty Bakery, I personally never tried their products. I've heard of them a couple of times and I just did a little research on my own yesterday when I saw all the controversy. People are saying that Huda kind of took this marketing theme for this specific launch and pretty much copied off of Beauty Bakery's overall image as a brand. When I was looking, I was like, oh no. And this is where I'm gonna be honest with everything. When I first found out that Huda was launching this and I saw the whole campaign for this, I was like, wow, like this is cute, but I'm like, this is so random. Like I see how it kind of ties together as far as just this particular theme, but I don't know. I feel like maybe as her brand, she doesn't want to have a full theme with all the products. I just don't feel like it fits her brand. I feel like it's so random. Like she could have expanded off of the desert dust, you know, theme that she had a while back. I love the idea and the concept of it, but the whole possibly stealing the marketing theme off of a brand whose image is pretty much the whole setting here. It's kind of like a red flag. I just feel like personally she could have did 10 times better with the whole marketing theme and making it different and making it stand out 10 times more than what it does now. She looks absolutely flawless and I'm not putting that down. The controversy, I can see what people are saying and even before the whole controversy that I knew about, I was like, okay, like this is just, I feel like it could have did better and maybe I'm just nitpicking at every little thing, but that's just my personal opinion and I keep it real with you guys here, especially when I do reviews and I'm sharing with products with you guys because I like to go into detail but I'm just gonna keep that short. All in all, I wanna get into the product itself and talk about what it is, how it wears, and we're gonna get into all of that. So I'm gonna open this up. All about trying new setting powders. Of course, I have my Holy Grail products. I'm always up to trying new things. So as you guys can see, Huda decided to come out with eight different setting powders for this launch, as well as a bake and blend brush to go with it. I feel like that personally is a great opportunity for all different skin types to try out the product instead of being just narrowed down to one or two different shades. It kind of gives people an idea. So let's just take a look at the packaging. So here we have the new Huda Beauty loose setting powders and this one is in sugar cookie. I just randomly grabbed one out of the box. It's an easy bake loose baking and setting powder. There's slight instructions on the back and I do believe that the packaging that you guys would see in Sephora's or if online, it's kind of like a cake box that she demoed on her Instagram. For mine, it's just in this display right here so I don't get to speak upon that necessarily. People are claiming that it resembles the Maybelline loose setting powder. I don't know which exactly one that they're talking about, but I feel like I've seen it in YouTube videos. To be real, it is nice packaging. It's different. There's only such few select types of packaging that you can possibly choose from, and I'm sure you guys can customize your own type of packaging. So as far as taking the shape from another brand, and of course, like for instance, the Laura Mercier and the Cover Effects setting powders have very similar packaging as far as like the product in general. But I do like the packaging. It's different than the round one. I do also want to say this product retails for 34 US dollars. I don't think it's a bad price. I feel like the Lara one's 38, I believe. I could be wrong. And of course you can go down in price with that as you go de depending on the brand and what they want to sell it at. So I think it's somewhat of a reasonable price compared to Lara Mercier or Cover Effects or like the hourglass one. Opening it up, here's what the inside looks like. There's a little cover over top of this, which I actually do like because it does kind of keep... Um, all right, well, be careful when opening up your powder because I have powder all over my lap, but that's okay. I'm gonna move on past that. So with this, there is a netting that filters out the powder so you don't have too much excess. It looks messy now, so I'm curious to see how this will work but there is a lid that you can put over top, which I think is kind of nice because it will keep it clean, but just be careful when I've noticed with opening this at first because it does create somewhat of a mess. People complain that her foundation has like fragrance in it and it was causing irritation. So I'm just curious to see how this will react on my skin because I'm pretty sensitive when it comes to stuff that is fragranced and I will pretty much know right away. So I'm curious about that. 
So here is a quick glimpse of all eight loose setting powders that she has. I'm going to quickly go over each and every one with the different undertones and my personal view of it. So the first one here is Sugar Cookie, which is a white translucent. Next one is Cupcake, which definitely has a little bit more of that peach undertone. Third one is Pound Cake, which definitely has a little bit more of a slight yellow undertone, but it still is pretty neutral. The next one is Banana Bread, which definitely has a little bit more warmth and yellow undertones to it. So this one is Blondie, which definitely has more warmth and yellow undertones to it compared to Banana Bread. So you guys can see the difference there. This one here, and I'm hoping I pronounce it right, is Kunafa or Kunafa. This is more of a rich yellow undertone, definitely more yellow and more warm than Blondie. So here we have Cinnamon Bun, which is more of the warmer tones, definitely a little bit deeper, and you can see that shade jump right there. And then lastly, we have Coffee Cake, which is this. So definitely rich and warm. I feel like all the shades can kind of reach a wide variety of customers who are interested in trying this product out. You know, not everyone wants to brighten underneath the eye. Maybe they want to set just a little bit more all over the face. So taking a look at the brush that I don't think comes with the powders. I think you can buy them separately. It's her Bake and Blend. I've never tried her brushes before, so I'm curious to see how this works out. So for foundation today, I'm going to be using my Makeup Forever Ultra HD stick and this is in 153 or Y405. I feel like I've mentioned this before but with these stick foundations I'm like right in between 415 and 405. If you guys are wondering why I'm not using it like on my face is because it's down to the bottom so I'm literally scooping what I can out of it. And I did put the Porefessional primer on earlier when I was like doing my brows and eye makeup. So you can use whichever primer you prefer. For this, I actually like using a brush to buff it in and then going in with a sponge. And then what I like to do is just take a sponge and press to kind of smooth out any brush marks that were left behind. Just going in with my ColourPop No Filter Concealer in Medium 26. I'm going to go in and highlight underneath the eyes and down the bridge of my nose and any other areas that I decide to put the concealer. Then taking my Real Technique sponge, I'm just going to go in and press that product into the skin and I actually really been liking this concealer. I'm still trying to get myself to like the foundation. So I might go down a shade than what I was originally going to with the loose setting powders just to kind of brighten just a little bit more. So today I'm going to be using banana bread as my setting powder. I was going to use Blondie, but it's a little bit too warm, especially since my concealer really didn't brighten underneath the eye. So I went down a shade just to kind of give me a little bit more of a brighter under eye. With this side, I'm going to be using the brush that comes with the collection. And then on this side, I'm going to be using a sponge, which I normally do. So just to see and demo for you guys how the brush works. I'm going to make sure everything is well blended out before going in and setting with the powder. For the brush, I'm going to be using more of the dense side. First off, the powder smells absolutely amazing. I'm curious though if it might irritate some people. I don't know how to explain the scent, but it's not like too sweet, but I don't think everyone will love it or love smelling that on their face. So looking at it, it's a very smooth powder. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but in person, the Make It Forever Ultra HD stick is more of a dewy finish. And by pressing that powder with the brush all over top of half of the face, it definitely eliminated the shine, but it didn't alter the foundation or it didn't move it. I'm going to go in and use the sponge for my right side and see how that works. And I'm just using my Real Techniques sponge. So it did go on the sponge pretty well. I couldn't really see it with the brush. I love the smell. It reminds me of something and I can't figure it out. I think it reminds me of my mom, if that's so weird. Like Joe Malone, maybe that's, no, it's not Joe Malone. Taking a look at the sponge, definitely blurs out the skin and alter what I put down. I don't know, I, I think I like both the brush and the sponge. I feel like the sponge kind of just adds moisture to the skin. It kind of balances it out well because I hate when I'm too powdery. So just going in with the fluffier side, I'm just gonna wipe away any excess powder that is on the skin. Brush is very soft. Nothing is being altered in my viewpoint of it. That definitely took away any type of shine. So what I'm gonna do is go off camera and apply bronzer and blush. And then I'm gonna kind of just go over a couple more things with the powder and then finalize everything up. So now that I finished bronzing, contouring, and applying blush, I'm gonna go back in with the powder and just clean up underneath and just clean up on the side of the contour on the nose as well, which I normally do. And then taking the opposite side, just wiping that away. 
Buddha also mentions that this powder is going to improve your selfie game. Okay, uh, keeps makeup in place, absorbs shine, no flashback, and enriched with vitamin E. That whole no flashback, you guys know what I love to do in my videos. If you guys watch reviews before from me, we're going to test that theory out. So I have my handy dandy iPhone right here. The flash is on and we're gonna take a selfie. you guys can see I don't notice any type of flashback this is not filtered whatsoever it's just flash with my iPhone 7 plus I'm actually impressed and I will say that I didn't notice any type of flashback with this powder so to wrap everything up for you guys I just want to quickly give you my final thoughts before I end this video let's just start with the product itself this retails I think I said for 34 USD dollars compared to like La Mercier which I think is 38 it's not a bad price point but if you are on a budget there are some other options that can work for you besides this back it kind of shows you the steps on how to use it which I feel like is somewhat self-explanatory it has the shade name I personally didn't get a list of ingredients with the PR package that was sent to me I didn't get the actual box that it comes in when purchasing it um, online or at a store so I can't really speak upon that it does look interesting as far as the powder itself it definitely smooths and blurs out any imperfections I personally love the smell and I'm trying to still think what it reminds me of I don't know it smells amazing so the powder it photographs very well it absorbs any type of shine and I'm super oily especially in weather like it is right now it's so hot out still stuck between using the brush that comes with it although I do like the brush I might use the brush for other things possibly this side for like contouring and god knows what I would use this side for if you are okay with using a sponge to apply I did like the sponge application when applying the powder so I'm going to give a big thumbs up on the formulation of the powder. I do feel like it is a good powder that I will continue to use along with my Laura Mercier and my Cover FX powder. So thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you guys truly enjoyed it and enjoyed my honesty. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.